Hey everybody, this is Greg Garrity. So Anthony Lottie will punt it away from the 41. Greg Garrity is the deep man for Penn State at the 10 yard line. Uh, former Penn State receiver and 2016 Big Ten champion. You're listening to the best uh, Penn State Nittany Lion podcast, the Mark Lesko podcast. Drew, out. well, first of all, I want to get into the video game. And I was watching um, uh, the previous episode with Austin where we were talking about the video game. And, uh, you know, as in life, Austin and I are not always going to agree on everything which is totally fine. You know, sports uh, debates are, in my opinion, some of the best because you can completely disagree on stuff and you can come to like, you know, here's the thing. Like if you watch like some sports debate shows, like, uh, you know, Skip Bayless, guys like that, um, you know, if, if it was like real life, it, it would nearly come to fists. I mean, that's how that's how sports debating is. But here's the thing I like about sports debates is it's pretty harmless. Um, hopefully, you know, it doesn't lead to uh, a physical altercation. It never would with me in Austin, but, you know, sometimes that happens where it's taken a little too seriously. So Austin and I aren't always going to agree, and we kind of disagreed on the um, – like the like the monetization basically for the video game and uh which is totally fine but uh i just wanted to say like when it comes to the video game and like let's say this was me and i was like a walk on which i could have been i did try out at penn state um so i probably would have opted in to put my name in the game which would if i could even though I'm probably never going to see the field. I don't know. Um, I certainly would have tried to make the field, but um, I think the way it should be structured, and I don't know, and I think this is what the players are fighting on because they're rejecting it right now, which I hope doesn't affect the date at which it comes out because we want this game to come out. Um, and like Austin said, it's been a ro rocky, bumpy road, but – if your name is in the game, okay, I did some simple math. They're probably going to sell like at least, I'd say, I, you know, this could be wrong, but I think it's probably going to be at least, let's just say 50 million copies, okay? So that's like $3 billion right there. You divide that by the amount of players that are probably going to put their name in the game. It's like 80 grand in royalties that they could make just from the sale of the game. Now, obviously, the game is going to take a cut of that. So let's say you even divide that by four. They're making like tens of thousands of dollars um, just for having their name in the game. Now, I think the players that are more famous, have more notoriety, are better at football, should get more money. But if it like for me, I could be making thousands of dollars just from, first of all, the sale of the game. And it's not just this first game. It's down the road. Um, as long as your name is in that game, you should be getting some money from it. And then in addition to that, like you like Austin said, game packs, you can buy stuff, which should all – a large cut of that should go to each player in that game. But whoever – whatever pack they buy, the majority of that should go to that player. But it should all just be divided up. So – I just think it's very important that I that they get this right because I do hope these players get royalties. I do hope they get more than five hundred dollars. Um, because I just I think there's so much opportunity with this game and the fact that NIL is now a thing and the transfer portal and the um huge notoriety that that could bring by like, oh, I'm gonna transfer to USC and I'm gonna be this big name now and I'm going to make more money from the game. Like, I just think there's so much opportunity here that Penn State and the NCAA and, you know, all the other greedy people that I could possibly uh, name off right now um, could help these players do to make money from this game. I just think it's a huge opportunity, not only for us as fans, but just 
for everyone involved, man. I just, you know, I think that it's, it's just, it's just, I, I just, I would hate to see them miss out on this opportunity and to, to, for these guys to possibly make some money because like I said, man, you know, I could have been, I, I could have been one of those guys that possibly could have been in a video game because when we were still in school, you know, when I tried out, uh, like I could have been in a video game, you know, potentially. So I would want like a cut of that basically. Um, and that's just all I'm trying to say, but, um, I don't know if you have anything else to say about it, Austin, but I just kind of wanted to kind of, um, I guess, break down a little more my view on it. And then, you know, you would kind of um, take in the, um, you know, it's it's just a video game and they should be given the $500, which means like, like you said, even the player that is never going to play, but his name is in the game gets 500 bucks. That's good, which I agree with. Um, you're, you're, I don't think your opinion is wrong. It's just, I just, I think it's just deeper than that and they should get as much as they can. So hopefully it's royalty based, but I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell what will happen. So I think just give your comments below what you think to those of you yeah, who are uh, listening. So a couple of, couple of things to, to add, uh, I guess. So looking back now, again, you could probably assume that there will be a bit of a sales bump um, because there was such a long period of time. But just looking at NCAA football 14, when that came out, uh, that sold just north of a million copies. That was mm -hmm. at $60 a copy. So that's $60 million from the sales of the game. Now, at, at the $500 uh, NIL valuation, if you – opt into putting your name in into the pie again there's about eleven thousand division one scholarship players it's 130 teams 85 scholarships a team it's about eleven thousand players at five hundred dollars opting in that's five and a half million dollars so right. so there you're looking at the percentage of of revenue already so let's say you double it. Okay. I want to give everybody a thousand bucks. Okay. So that's, you know, $11,000. That's 11 grand. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, $11 million. Pardon me. Uh, so that's $11 million out of that pie. Well, the pie from just sales alone was about 60 million. So that's over a sixth of total revenue generated already. Not to mention all the, all the development all the dev staff's got to get paid. The studio's got to get paid. The publisher's got to get paid. There's really not a whole crap ton of money left over from a video game. I, th I think I think the profit margin on video games is a little bit inflated. That's why, as you've seen, which for those gamers out there, you'll know this, that's why the marketing strategy and the... Uh, time and money investment in development has started to shift from core game content into microtransactions, uh, cosmetic packs for things, um, additional map packs that you can buy, all the additional add-on content because just the sales of the game, it, it does make them money, but it doesn't really make them a ton of money um as far as like their actual profit margin so it has to be done in a way that makes sense uh because again at the end of the day they have to be profitable um if we're looking at this for example uh international game technology net profit margin as of march 31st 2023 uh, that was stated as 5.17% profit margin. So after all of the costs are taken away, they profit 5.17%. If we're adding in payouts to players that are in great excess of that valuation, that's going to have to be funded by something other than sales of games. Because the profit margin is just not there to do it. 
So I, 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 I'm finding some economical snags um, to this operation. I also, I also kind of disagree. I, I really don't think. I just, I, especially for a college football game, I don't think. I don't. I just don't think the best players should be getting tons and tons and tons of money, and then the person that's fifth on the depth chart is getting pennies. I, I I disagree with that. It's a video game. You don't have to opt in. If not, whatever. It'll be a randomly generated character with a number on a jersey, just like it always was. So be it. Um, I, I just I don't see the value there unless unless you strike a separate deal that's not attached to the game saying, hey, we're just going to pay you to be an ad promoter of the game because you're a player. Okay, that's a different conversation. But I don't, I just don't think that they're going to be able to pay out more to every player that opts in based on that, that is directly tied to game sales. I, I don't see that happening. I don't think the profit margin is there. Um, so for those reasons, uh, I, I'm, I'm just skeptical of, of, of that plan. I, I think it'll have yeah. to be a, a, a different, a different Avenue that they, that they take to get additional compensation. How many copies do you think they'd sell? Uh, like, like I said, uh, NCAA 14 sold a little over a million copies. I would say it, I, my expectation is it would get a sales bump for being, uh, unavailable for so long. Um, so right. million and a half, I, I, I would say maybe, um, you know, and, and probably if they go along with everybody else, they might be selling it not for 60 bucks, but for 70 bucks, they might have additional, you know, whatever, a, a legacy edition that goes right. for 90 bucks or whatever, probably. you know, they always, so you pull don't think, their, they, you don't think they would, uh, you don't think they would sell like 50 million copies. I don't think so. I, okay. I don't know. I don't know well, if any I don't know if any game is as as uh, ever right. sold. <laughs> well, yeah, I just I don't know. That number was just kind of like like there was no uh there was no factual um okay. research behind that. So uh, I am I am in I am incorrect. So the best selling video game of all time to date is Minecraft. That has sold 238 million copies across all platforms. Grand Theft Auto V and EA's Tetris are the only other known video games that have surpassed 100 million copies. But like I said, I think we need to pull pull everything back a little bit um, because... NCAA you know, 14 sold a million copies, so... A little bit over a million copies. Now, if, if we look at 1.5 million, right. So if we look at like, you know, some of these other ones, even like the Madden, the Madden NFL games, some of those have been selling, you know, for between, between five and 10 million copies. Yeah. And Madden is awful. So, well, right. And, and so, you know, we have to, we have to take all the stuff in, into, into account. Um, that's why I'm using the NCAA 14 numbers because that was the last game that we have available uh, to pull data mm -hmm. from. Um, mm -hmm. So I would think it's going to get a bump, maybe a million and a half copies, maybe 2 million would be an exceptional, uh, you know, sale for, for the game. Um, as much as we love college football, as much as, as I love it, you love it. And a lot of our viewers love it. Um, not everybody gives a crap about playing a game about college football. I know that seems blasphemous. I think it is blasphemous. Um, I haven't played a Madden in probably since like 2011 or something. Um, I just always, I loved college a lot more. So I always play those games. Yeah. Um, but it's relatively, it's relatively niche. So, it's, yeah. you know, the, the, now, now if there's a huge ad campaign and they pay Caleb Williams a bunch of money and they pay, Nick Singleton some money and they, you know, they, they pay these big time players money to go on television and advertise for it. Can they get those sales up? Maybe it, it's possible. It's very much possible. Um, yeah. But again, 
I, I have to base my estimates and, and, and kind of my vision based upon the best available data that we have. And that's from the last game. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to ballpark everything around that way. Um, you know, so again, you know, like Mark said before, drop down the comments, let me know what you think. Um, you know, I, I think I brought up some good points, um, to consider as far as the profit margins in, in, uh, the video game industry, not being really all that great from sales anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, how, how should this happen? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if, that it can really be tied to, to game sales. Maybe it can to some degree, like the $500, uh, maybe you can give yeah. a little bit more. I don't know, but, um, yeah, definitely let us know. Yeah. If you do that math, you know, that the 500 makes sense, but. Well, and, and, and that's, so that's it's going to be like, it's going to be a minimum, at least 60 million that, that is made. Now I, I think with this game coming back out, it may, it may triple. So it could go to 3 million copies. Um, but I'm, th dude, I was thinking NCAA, man, it, it sold like 50 million copies, you know, like, because if you do like the math, like America and football fans, it's like, of course, but guess not. So, well, yeah. And, and, and that's why, you know, I mean, you know, this I mean, about me, some of our viewers probably kind of figured it out now I'm, I'm a very much like a data guy. I, I like yeah. to, I like to have some numbers. I like to, I, I don't like to just kind of like frivolously expound some kind of a take with, with absolutely no information about anything about what the heck I'm talking about. I just don't really think that's a wise practice. Um, let me see if I can pull up. Well, like the, the total franchise sales um, when it, when it comes, when it comes to that. Here we go. There's the game series. So you're saying 11,000 players probably going to put their name in it. Well, all, all I'm doing is doing the simple math. So it, it's not going to be that. I'm just going, there's 130 teams. Every team is eligible to, ha to carry 85 scholarship players. So that 85 times 130 different teams gets you like 11,050 players or something like that. Um, so I'm just doing the quick math. That's that's all I'm doing to, to get a ballpark idea of why the number, like why that $500 is what it is. Yeah, it's um, a, probably going to be like 1,000 roughly players in it that put their name in. That's, you know, it'd be like, yeah. Thousand players will say times five hundred. That's fit five hundred thousand. Um, but so pretty much at the end of the day, you're basically saying math, math wise, and for fairness, just make it five hundred for each player. Uh again, looking at it with the limited information that we have, looking at it without, I I don't really think we can get those public disclosures on like the costs of development and all, all these people's salaries. And I, I don't, I don't think that's possible. These are all, these are all private orgs that are, that are doing this stuff. Um, publishers cuts, yada, 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 plus whatever royalties the dev team gets for sales and all these types of things. There's a lot that goes into it that I don't think most people know about. I would say I probably know more than average. And I would also say that I don't really know all that much. Um, but what I do know is that it, it's it's relatively complicated. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of hands in the cookie jar. So at the end of the day, the one thing everyone understands is it's a business. It has to earn profit. It can't just operate in the red. Um, we can't just be cranking out games and just losing tons and tons and tons of money. Um, that's just not, that's not a thing that we can do. So that's kind of why it kind of looks like on the surface that's reasonable. Um, mm -hmm. you know, um, now, now again, it, it depends on, I'll have to go in and look a little bit deeper and, and I can do that uh, on like how many teams actually did, um, 
give the give the rights to have their teams in the in the in the game and yeah maybe it's not all 130 maybe it's 85 okay well that changes the math so you know it it it, it just to, it, that's the complexity to all these things is so many decisions are contingent on other decisions that maybe we don't even know are solidified or super concrete yet everything is so fluid that's why it kind of feels like a crapshoot so um you know i, I think we're just going to have to see and 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 kind of figure out how how this progresses um you know we just got to keep keep watching the news and all that kind of stuff but all i'm saying is i think there's a way that they can do it and pay some players more right. um like you know like i said maybe it's like oh you're going to get the Caleb Williams uh prize pack and and, and that mm-hmm. costs 10 bucks okay well Caleb Williams gets 50% of that cut or whatever like yeah. you could do it that way i think that would be fine um you know uh Oh, you can get the the Penn State, um, you know, generations of greatness uh, uh, uniform pack. Okay, yeah. that that that's fine. You know, yeah. It, it, again, well, it, it's it's EA. There's going to be microtransactions galore. It, right. Everybody knows it. That's what they do. They're a bunch of scumbags. Yeah, they but, they they better they better have. I I, I think I don't foresee a scenario where this doesn't get made because I think they can go those routes and offer NIL royalty stuff regarding that. I think that's absolutely a possibility. Right. right. So, you know, there, there's definitely ways to do it um, right. to where it's not attached to game sales, yeah. um, which I don't, there's just not a whole lot of wiggle room there, but there's plenty of wiggle room. If you're adding, you know, uh, uniform packs and player yeah. packs and, and all this crap. Definitely, definitely an opportunity uh, there. I think that is that's where the um, the players' association should should aim their negotiations at. Mm-hmm. Um, if it, if it were if they asked me uh, my opinion on it, I think that's where they should go um, and stay away from the game sales stuff. I just don't think there's a lot of wiggle room there. But yeah, all right, Austin, we got to get to um, Drew Aller and the um, podcast. Um, I'm glad we talked about the video game because uh that's that's a big deal it really is and it affects a lot of penn state players because we have some good guys on our team but 